Today we're going to be playing some Nilfgaardian Knights. We sort of kind of baited people into thinking we're playing Nilfgaardian Knights when we did the uh, April Fool's video with Mill. So I did actually want to play Nilfgaardian Knights. So that's what we're going to do. We are going to play a non Golden Necker version, although I have seen some Golden Necker versions running around. But ours, we're not going to be doing that. But we are going to be trying out one or two new cards. Not new, but like buffed cards. So another reason to play the deck. We are playing Magic Lamp, because we're going to go really tall anyway, so I'd rather just have the lamp. And we are obviously in Tucson Toy Hospitality. Upper range, we've got the Beauclair here. It's really unfortunate I don't have the Meteorite Powder to Premium Beauclair, because I believe it's a really good art. And we're playing War Council. Beauclair is obviously really good. You boost up the enemy and it really tall. Steal the points back to yourself, then reset their guy. Really good. Then we have War Council, just a consistency card. War Council is a card if you want to swap out for something else you can. Maybe you want to fit in Heat Wave, for example. But I like War Council. It gives you consistency and carryover. But since we're not playing a tactic deck, it's not necessary. This could be whatever else you want it to be. I just like having it. Then we have Rainfarn. Rainfarn I wanted to try out because he did get buffed. I think once or twice now in the Balance Councils. He's down to 5 power. Since he's disloyal, that's pretty good. And just another way to take advantage of your opponent's buffs for yourself. Then we have Ivar Evil Eye. He just swaps power. He's insane. Any deck going up against you has to have a tall punish. Because otherwise, Ivar, Rainfarn, and Beauclair just give you so many big points that it's really hard for decks to keep up unless they have insane engines or just some kind of bunch of tall punishes. Something like um, a lot of mid range decks and monsters tend to be have like Heat Wave and Curse of Corruption. Stuff like that. Then we have the Royal Decree. Now, Decree I put in. I wasn't originally playing Decree, but I felt the deck lacked consistency. So we ended up adding Royal Decree. And now it has a bit more consistency. You could cut the Decree. I just found I wasn't getting the cards enough. I was trying and I was trying no Decree and Hunting Pack with some locks. And um, <laughs> good old, uh, what's his name? Master of Puppets. But we didn't end up going with it. Just because I was running too many control decks. Against control decks, Master Puppets and locking is terrible, so we went back to this. Then we have Invocation and Vilgefort. You can swap Invocation for Heat Wave very easily with an extra provision. In the bronzes, probably. Well, only Nilfgaard Unite, but you could probably fit that in there. I just like Invocation, and I haven't played Invocation in a while, so I want to give it a shot. Most decks in Nilfgaard can't play it. Like, you're most of the time, well, most of the Nilfgaard decks I see are Assimilate Tactics. And it's not a tactic. If it's not a similar tactic, it's some kind of soldier deck, which means you're running Heat Wave and they don't play Invocation. Or it's some kind of Renfrey deck and you can't play either. So you just like never see Invocation. So this was an opportunity to play it. And I really like the card, so we're going to play it in this one. Then we have, so like I said, we got Invocation. Filga Forts are big removals. Then we have Guillaume. Probably pronounced that wrong as I do every card in existence that comes from France. And then, uh, yeah. He's just another way to take advantage of your opponent's boost, make their guys really big, because you can take the points later. And we're playing Black Blood. I just think Black Blood is really cool. You don't have to play Black Blood. It's just another punish with the um, leader ability. And you can always just throw Black Blood down early if you don't have the leader, right? A lot of decks boost, and you can usually punish him for it. Then we have Milton and Palmarin. Just really good combo there. Combos like this, where you need multiple cards together, really benefit from a tutor, so I ended up going with it. Sangreal False Siri, another combo. If you don't get the Sangreal on the False Siri, it's not the end of the world, because you can take advantage of the boost on an opponent's card if you want to. Like, you can boost the opponents by 12, and then just use the Palmarin. They'll take the 12 damage, or you can reset it with or destroy it when your big destroys later. So, it's not the end of the world if it's on False Siri, but you obviously want it on False Siri. Then we're playing Roderick. Another consistency card. Uh, Roderick got buffed a little while back, and I haven't seen people playing him, but I like Roderick. And I wanted to play him, give him a little more love. He's not fantastic here. Well, not... Obviously, he's not as good as, like, Royal Decree. But you have some two-card combos that you don't want to interrupt, like Palmer and Milton, and Sangreal Falls Siri. But we don't have... Other than that, like, we have a lot of duplicate effects, right? Like, this is a tall punish. This is a tall punish. This is a tall punish. So if he finds a tall punish, usually you're pretty happy. And if not, he can find you a tutor, a thinning card. There's a lot of choices. It does make Vile a little less 
good than normal, but I, there's so many four version cards, I think Vile just fits. Then we have the two Nilfgaardian Knights here. Just, they got a power buff, so I wanted to play them. Then we have the Vile for Forbidden Knowledge, the two Boo Hurts, the one Pallor, two Hunting Packs, which is still in the deck for a little bit of thinning. And then a Squirrel and the two Van Morlhelm Hunters. You could try and fit in instead if you want to. The, uh, what's the, Alba Armored Cavalry, right? I don't see him. Alba Armored Cavalry is good too, if you don't like the Hunter. But this is the version we're going to run with, see how it works out. And it should be pretty fun, because making really tall units is always pretty fun. P-Star. That's uh, the, one of the Russian community people, right? If I recall correctly. Let's assimilate Tactics again. A lot of this deck going around. It's probably the most common deck this season, along with just various Ren-free stuff. Hunting Pack, does he have... Yeah, yeah. One of the things about Hunting Pack is people really like to play Lamp. And let's use Open Hunting Pack, which I like. Don't think we need Pallor against his deck. Got some stuff here. It's a lot of golds. Do we need a lock? Potentially, there's a lot of hefty Helga versions, so I guess we'll keep that for now. It's not the best hand. I wonder what he's picking here. We're also weak to Master of Puppets, potentially. She could be playing. Or be spawning. I've seen a lot of Artori's Vigo Master of Puppets lately. Torres. Okay, so he's just picking what he wanted. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure he sees Ivar there. And Rainfarn, and that's probably GG. Ivar Rainfarn and Paul Myron. Uh You know, there's a chance here because we could Peller we could Peller Torres, then invocation it. Can we win the game without doing that? Maybe. The thing is, Rainfarn is such a big punish. We're gonna do it. Spirit devoid of name, depart now our veil of pain. He knows we're gonna do it now. He knows we're playing invocation. But I don't see a way for him to stop us taking it. He could and the other nice thing here is this might convince him to let us win round one. Because if it, the Torres evolves, we can't put the spying on his cards. If we can't put the spying on his cards, then we're pretty happy. Well, he'd be happier that way, but that gives us a round, which is what we want. He can't banish the ones he put in. He's going to draw into some of them, potentially. Well, he's probably going to draw into a bunch of them, so this might not be worth it, but... The fact that he has both Rainfarn... Like, the fact that you get, like, all three of these is really bad, right? The Rainfarn and the Ivar just punish our own plays. That is why we capped you. For that, we're Hefty Helga. his own boo hurt. We always have black blood. Black blood's a huge punish. But we probably want to save it at this point. The fact that he's playing all of these like terrible cards, not terrible, but you know like the cards you don't want to play is good. Because it probably means he won't have 
good plays later. We've got Milton. We have Vilgefort and we have Black Blood. Black Blood puts us ahead, so I think we'll go for that play. It really applies a lot of pressure. It applies a ton of pressure to him. He's gonna have to use the Enslave, yep. We still have Vilgeforts. Although that is all of our tall punishes. But now we can go full Siri. We don't have a follow-up to false Siri, but we can always, except for the Milton, we can go false Siri Milton. Good purifier, two vitality, that's fine. Question is, is false Siri Milton the play? We lose Milton Palmarin, but he puts spying in the Palmarin, so I don't really want to play it because of coup. Yeah, let's go for false theory here. We all make sacrifices for the Empire I might also just force him to pass because of the Sangreal threat. I was really hoping that taking the Taurus would make him pass. He has no good things for this. Do this now. It's a nice big lead. And 22. He probably has a Vilgeforts, but I think that's the only real tall punish he's going to have here. Because he can't have drawn our Ivar or Rainfarn yet. And those cards are really bad in a short round, where the opponent's not boosting, and he doesn't have all the boost synergy we do. Ten points. Do we want to let him do this? Not ten. He needs eleven. Uh, let's see. He gets two off assimilate. We get one tick from Siri. So we're up 11. He would need 11 points to tie. How good's a tie for him? It's probably good. But if he's forced to play... Like, Stefan Skellen and, Art and Arta are the cards that get him out of this, right? Or Vilgeforts. Those are all good to have him play. We'll take the two-card advantage, I think. Yep, there's the Stefan. This two card advantage is massive because it really hurts the Rainfarn, Rainfarn and Ivo. Especially I Ivo, right? He'll get to Adrenaline so much faster now. He might just all in this round. And we still have Torres now. An unevolved form. This is a decent card. Um, let's think. I'm thinking about this one because it is vulnerable to Ivar, but he can't swap. Yeah, we'll keep. No, we just throw this either way, right? If, if he just dry passes, we still play this. Yeah, we'll do this. We want Vilgeforts. We want Palmerin. I don't know if we'll be able to trigger it. We get another one in our deck, and we want another rain farm. There's no guarantee we draw into those, but I think just taking them is good. Besides, it's for the content, right? We'll have to draw none of them. Hey, we got two. We, we do need an opening play, though. This is where Nilf Guardian Knight is good. This is an opening play. Uh, that is decent, because we go into one of our two Palmerins. 
and then um, boost the Roderick. That's good, that's good. Ideally, this plays like a Palmarian into a War Council, but that's not exactly likely. We have two of these, so it should see one of them. That's not too bad. We did end up with last say here, which is good. Okay, we had to hope he wasn't playing Master of Puppets. See, we could... The swap will be really strong. I don't want to do that yet. We have double rain firing, which is hilarious. I don't think we're getting a better Guillaume than we have... Or Guillaume than we have right now. I don't think we do. So we're going to play it. It's not amazing. Now, obviously, we can Ivar after his Ivar swap, so it's a little bit of a counter there. And we have double rain farm. Just potentially good, potentially not. Depends how tall he gets. No lock us. That's not that great for him. Not that great. We have double rain fire, which is something. I'm trying to think of when we would want to go Beauclair. I think Beauclair is decent now. I don't think we're getting anything smaller than a six. Obviously, it's the Ivar turn. It has to come down. Then we just Ivar back. If he ha if he drew into it and kept it, that is, which he probably did because it triggers assimilate. He does have coup, potentially, for this. He can make another Ivar, but we do have, we have two rain farms. And if you Ivar the... Or if you coup the Ivo, it gets smaller, so it's not that great. This will be an interesting one, no matter how it goes. I guess we should have put it to the left of Beauclair because of um, Rain Farm. Yeah, we probably should have. I think he's deciding on the coup now. I was just going to rip the Bilga Forts on it. That's okay. Did go melee, which gives us a really big Rain Farm. We have double rain farm. He probably has rain farm and potentially second Vilga Forts, right? Is that rain farm and second Vilga Forts? Do this now. I think the reset on Beauclair gets us the win here, even if he has a Vilgaforts. The second Vilgaforts, I mean. But we will see. Because I think he pulls a Nilfgaardian Knight. Oh, we got Squirrel too. So that wouldn't be as good. But if he pulls a Nilfgaardian Knight off of Vilgaforts, that's pretty good still. Palmarin. Into Treason. That's a decent Treason. So what's his last card? What is his last card? Well, we're going to Vilgaforts here. And we do not want to kill off Roderick because of the reset. But if he has Rain Farm, we'd want to reset that instead. Does giving him a bigger Rain Farm help us? So he could Rain Farm for like plus 28, right? Then we could reset that plus 28. 
don't know if the ordering really matters here. I guess the safe play is if this is Vilgefortz instead of Rainfarn, we should Rainfarn here. I think this is the safer one. Because if he has Rainfarn, we just Beauclair it and we win. He doesn't even do anything. Alright, he's just going to forfeit. I do take that one. That was a very interesting game. Very interesting. Patricidal Fury. Raid Warriors were not that scared of. Probably should hold on to the lock in case it's not, though. Going first, we definitely want to keep a soldier. I maybe don't want to keep this. Like I said, we're going first. We definitely want to rip the uh, knight. The good thing about the hunters is they can proc your hunting pack. You this is raid warriors. They shouldn't have tall punish outside of um, champion's charge, right? I remember when champion's charge is considered to be a terrible card. Anyone else remember that? That's funny. We just play um, Uhur. Let's see why we wouldn't. I want to get one out before False Theory. By the way, I think if he does not have the other Highland Warlord in hand, it'll be the first game in living memory where they don't have both Highland Warlords in their opener. Just think that's funny. Now what would we what would do we want to do? We can't play hunting pack. We could try and set it up. We don't have a great setup without the lock. That's fine. Uh, if he plays the primal savage real spawn slaying with doomed. Trying to think. If we do decree, what what would we decree? I don't want to use it. I want to set that up a combo later. So we don't have that many great choices here. Not really, at least. I think we'll set up Milton. I pledge it upon the heron. Milton is one that can get reached by his control later in the game. So I think it makes sense to use him here. Because the best card to play out of our hand prior to hunting pack is Yame. Which we can hit this. Will be bigger than we go Milton first, and we can Milton order. Because Milton will die later on from the Highland Warlords. If they'll make the signing blow and stuff big enough to kill him. So now we go Guillaume. Let's get the plus seven. That should be enough for round one. If it isn't, he'll play Primal Savage. Oh, I guess he doesn't. He only has one Highland Warlord. But yeah, this will be. <laughs> this is the first game I remember where my opponent didn't have access to both Highland Warlords, which is pretty funny. They almost always do. Now, obviously, this, now this warrior is a huge liability because we could just reset it or something or kill it. So many options. There's the stunning blow. Like later on, that would just kill him. We're up by 14. We're still vulnerable to Sove. Still vulnerable to other stuff. So we do want to play something here. We could throw the Ivar. The Ivar is a really good play later on. We could also use Beauclair. But that's even better. I think... Vilgefortz could thin the other Pineland Warlord for him. I think we just play the Ivar. Kill me with poison. It guarantees the round at this point. 
And if we don't play a tall card, like a second tall card, he does have the champion charge and so... He's gonna go for the Highland Warlords again. He hasn't played the second one. Is there any way for him to boost his own cards? I'm trying to think, as if not, we could go for Black Blood for when he plays Sove, because it bricks the Sove, because it kills itself. I'm just trying to think if there's another thing he would have. We can open Squirrel, that's pretty good actually. Definitely open Squirrel. Let's get rid of this. If he doesn't have the other one in hand, he's going to have such weak raids. One thing, if we go Black Blood, I don't think he has any boost cards that boost his own things. I don't think. Because we just throw the Black Blood, that kills Sove. So if we play that early, actually, it's going to be Highland Warlord, right? But he's only gotten two. He's only gotten two. Good Paul Mare in this. Sangrail is not great here. I think we just play this and see what we get. That's pretty good. Just because it's point slam. I think we go... I don't know how we... We can double up on the Sangrail still. He's gonna have some big clashes. But we can double up on the Sangrail, because if we go really big on his guy, then we can rainfall the points, and then Beauclair the points, and then reset him. So I do kind of like it. He shouldn't have a Purify. Alright, let's just play Hunting Pack. The clash is a problem because he can clash the points away. I'm not sure he'll do that. It's where he gets value is if we go, um, say, Rainfarn, and then he then clashes us with this because it would clash a lot of the points because we might bow clear then he clashes it no problem with so if we have black blood for so we do this if he clashes with the scenario character all day, not the scenario. He should do it here, I think. That means he doesn't have it for carryover. If he doesn't do it here, I think we do a black blood next turn, potentially. Or some Vilga Forts. Okay, so he doesn't want to. Maybe if he doesn't want to, we can do the rain farm then. Is this good? Probably not getting better, right? Do not assume you can order me around. Wanna remove the damage guys? Questions do we reset him here? I think we do the reset. Should force the sove. If it doesn't sove, we black blood. And then pass. It's still it's champion's charge, right? Those take leaders. Up by 12. This is the card that other than... um. So that boosts himself. I think that's the only one, though. 
the question here is, do we play Black Blood and then Bricksove, but die to Champion's Charge? Or go into round three with him having this? His leader's better than ours. He passed. So I think he's got it. Either of those force the leader, but he might just have a play that's like eight points or something, because he has the Clash order. Nice, we got the tier. We're happy with that. Tier's gone. So we did have a play that was big enough, but it was the tier. I think we take this. But we do we do have to open Black Blood. And hopefully he doesn't open Sove, although I don't see why he would open Sove. We also need a better hand than this. Hmm. It's not a great hand. This should brick Sove now. I don't think these decks play Heat Wave. Tell me, there's no, no there's no corrupted Flaminica. I don't think there's any lock targets that are good. Roderick gives us what? One of these. This hand looks terrible. This plays into what he's got if we use the order. Because of the clash. Go eight. We'd live with one health if we did that. I think we do it. He's going to clash to kill it, right? Oh, he's not going to. So Sov is still bricked. The chance that you get... This is guaranteed... That's not guaranteed. You could get one of these. I think we want to go... Roderick here because this is the turn. Well, if we go double, we don't want to play. We don't want to play Boo Hurt. I guess this, this this should be a Vilga Fort's turn actually. It's not a good Vilga Fort's. We don't want to play into the Champion's Charge if he's holding on to it. We don't want to boost him because of so. We want the Sov to die. This forces him to play at ranged. And then we can still kill a unit with Black Blood. Oh, he just didn't keep the Sove. Oh, so we're fine then. Yeah, we're good here. So we just go... Black Blood will destroy this guy. And then this will just win the game. Uh, this is a guaranteed win, so we just take this. Black Blood FTW. Take him out, Black Blood. I wonder if he just put the Sove back into his deck. Shield and save me some time. Imposter, okay. Could be status Nilfgaard, which is a... We just leave the game if it's status Nilfgaard. Just kidding, we don't leave the game, but probably should if it is. We need double locks in case it is. Otherwise, it might be some kind of Renfree. Interesting. Doesn't tell us anything. Do this to set up hunting pack. Then if he plays hunting pack, he can't play hunting pack because he's playing musicians. It's like if it, oh, it was no musicians, we might think that. Still be Renfrey, could still be status. Can always be Shoop too. 
Guess he's gonna trigger this for us anyway. Yeah, it's Renfrey. Figures. Renfri in Nilfgaard is extra tall punishers than normal. I think we go Paul Marin here. That's a good one. Guillaume is really, really good then. Do Guillaume. Then we've got like Siri and stuff. I was kind of hoping to see full uh, Black Blood though. Okay, he bricked us a card. Good for him. Actually, we've got two knights on this row, right? So we should put them on this row. You might play the War Council just so Siri can play a card. So we want to save the leader, I think. But next turn should be a turn. Next turn, if he goes down to four, we might have to Vilga Forts here. I don't want to, though, because we won't, have, won't be able to take advantage of Rain Farn and Siri. This is what? We give him five, we get. 30, 40, 42, so it's plus 35. I think this is the Rain Farn turn. This should force one of his tall removals. Like this has to force one. There's an Igni. Yeah, he's got the Igni. That's fine. We fill the forts now, right? The next turn we'll have to Siri if he plays a card. Or I guess he wins uneven. Good old, good old Renfri, right? Let's see, what do we do here? What do we do? He's got to be like so happy with how this went. But yeah, like Ren Nilfgaard Renfri plays a lot of destroys. Like he still has a Vilga Forts, basically guarantee that too. And he bricked us this card, which is nice. I almost wanted to keep it. Oh, he's going to play a card here. That's weird. He might be able to 2 us. Pretty decent chance of it. Is yeah, well. Get out of here with your stupid tray here. And stupid card. But with all the buffs, the thinning, like you can just throw it into the Nilfgaard decks far more easily now. He's going to try and 2 us with the leader too, by the way. It's gonna work. Oh, did we just RNG into that? Yeah, good. You're really good, aren't you? It's too good. We should have used this order, but I'm tilted. You know, he's playing so much tech, though. He can't. Maybe he's like missing out on some key cards. I want to play this before Siri. So I think we do this now. I guess we don't have to play the War Council. We're up a point still. 
It's gonna banish the Boo Hurt. It's with the leader. Get the War Council. Quite the mean task. Ye who wander on the gale, ye we summon, ye we call. Now nah, we just do this. He still has a Vilga Forts. Can you smell it? Is on the we don't want to stack the one guy too tall. Is it Ren free time? Yeah, it is. A good mage is a dead mage. We have to play Milton because the Ren free is too many points. Having to lock this Master Puppets is really annoying. Messed up our ordering. So we have to play this, we have to play this, then we just died to round 3 Renfrey order. A noble plan indeed, I say. There's no way around it. Unless we just risk the Sangrail now. If we just throw the Sangrail now... Is this just... Yeah, the Milton's just a losing play. The Milton's a losing play. We, we have to play this. If he's got the Vilga Forts, he wins. He doesn't win either way, though, that way. He can just hold it. Good. Yeah, if we this was an option there, right? Because we get more points off Sangreal. But it's a losing play if he has... If he doesn't play a card. Fall too far behind. We had to risk that. I still think we lose because it's Renfrey. He has the order. We had to use our order. We can't really trigger... Well, we can't trigger Black Blood, but... Not nicely. What do we have for Roderick? We're looking at Black Blood, Decree, and not much is what we're looking at. I don't want that hunting pack. But this is it's worth the same amount of points as the squirrel. Figures. Figures. I think our best shot's Black Blood. Then hoping he doesn't have he only has one Nausicaa and it dies then he can't slave driver it like I guess we hope that we just hope he doesn't have another one hmm ah, well that's GG Ryoto Muramoto. So we're going crimes here. I don't think. I don't think. If it's Fire Sworn Crimes, which people have told me to try out, the squirrel's good. But we have enough to punish, like, Fire Sworn Fallen Light stuff without needing to keep it. I was going to say, the, the reason we like playing this is because it makes Roderick better to have already played this. We didn't have Roderick in our hand, then we top decked the Roderick off of the redraw. Awesome. Love to see it. Once again, we kind of lack an opening card here. We play this. It's pretty good. It's actually really good. Now we hope he plays a unit. So we can lock it, hunting pack, and then start boosting stuff. But he does have to play a unit for this to work. If he's playing poisons, he might not play a unit. Maybe we should have kept the order then, if he's playing poisons. But I don't 
know if I don't think this does the off the books. It usually is like Acarantia. I guess they do sometimes play the poisons. I just haven't seen it lately. All right, we're we're doing something. All right. I mean, he better have a purify. He's gonna have a purify, right? Because it's the Salamander guy. I'm sure he's got a purify for that. But honestly, if it's just boost and tall, I don't care that much. Oh, and he doesn't. Interesting. I think we take this here. We want to get value off of drill he can. We don't really have engines, so it's not going to hurt us. Any more than just like a regular fee card. Do of Ivar and stuff. We want to play a Boo Hurt because of Siri later. So we'll do that. Go like Boo Hurt. Probably go like Boo Hurt and then see if he passes. If not, we can go uh, Milton. Although we want to save that for Palmerin. So hopefully just... Oh, it is Fire... Is this Fire Swarm Prime? Must be. Guess up a nice bigger rain farm back there then. This is the same value, these orders. Fees, I should say. If he didn't play a poison, I don't think he has one. If he didn't play one earlier, I'm pretty sure he doesn't have one, so we're safe here. So go pretty tall. Then we'll make the um, vampire guy our biggest unit with the biggest boost if we decide to rain farm. not very big right now though we wouldn't want to play it at the moment while he's thinking let's think about Roderick this is really good this is okay good good I don't want to play this yet bad okay so we have a pretty good Roderick here If we want to play one of the other cards, Roderick's pretty good. Let's play you. I love how I keep hitting this. It's like it's targeted. It feels bad here, but we have a lot of boost options for him, right? Like, we could get the Sangrael, get two bad choices off of the Roderick. We could get Milton, we can get Guillaume, which are all really good. And then we can get Decree, which would get one of these two. So I think Milton makes sense. I'm a little concerned though, because we don't play too many good cards, considering he hasn't played like a Madam Serenity, and we're sure he's playing King of Beggars tribute package. Otherwise, why would you do the one less tributes? I guess he could be playing Sigi. He's got a few gangs out there, like three. Four gangs. Ah, as we mentioned, Sigi, it turns out to be this. Interesting. So we do want a Roderick then. Yeah, these are two bad choices. Picking that because of Milton. Not 
obviously we obviously we don't want to purify the locked guy. I will almost guarantee this guy's playing in more eels though. So he has at least one tall punish. It's kind of hard to fit more than one tall punish into collusion. Which is what this is going to be. He's got a free Seagy though. Maybe it's not free. Tide Cloak, Salamandra. Salamandra's not a gang, right? Man's got the ways. Trigger the King of Baggers here. Looking for a poison, probably. Or I guess he's missing a gang, right? Cut up conch bloater. Tide cloak. He's missing blind eye. Fire sworn. Just killed our Roderick. That's not that bad. I think we take this rain farm. I like Ivo better. Because Ivo needs less setup. So I think we do this one. That's 23 is pretty good. Now obviously he loses 12 from the infusion still. We know he doesn't have a purify. Because if he had it, he would have purified his other guy at the beginning of the game. Beginning of the round, I should say. There we go. Win that round by like 35 points. That's pretty good. We have some big punishes here. Milf Guardian Knight's exactly what we're looking for. We need like opening type cards. So go Milf Guardian Knight. Hopefully we can start boosting his guys. We've got what? As far as enemy boost, we can go Knight, Guillaume. I want to save leader for black blood. So we can go like Knight, Guillaume, Beauclair, but then Ivar's offline. We'll see what he plays. We will see what he plays. We've got we have options, and we have a fair bit of control here. Like this, it's all nice. We'll hold on to the tactic. The this it's gonna go on Nilfgaardian Knight probably eventually, because it gets some more value there. But until then, I'd rather not want, make him want to do a tall punish right away. Okay, there's Novigrad. Not the kind of stuff we're looking for, honestly. I mean, we can just play Black Blood without the leader and save the leader for like a double who hurt Siri kind of digging that idea questions do we want to use the order this turn I think we do I think we do this It messes with Beauclair and stuff. We're not going to play Beauclair this round, I don't think. Like, we're just looking to pass next turn. The turn after. He's Madam uh, Serenity. It's probably be the best case for him. Because it would trigger the Black Blood on the Peach. King of Beggars. I don't think Black Blood's going to be really... A be a problem for him. This one. Although, I don't know if he can fit Serenity into the deck based on what we've seen. Like, this is pretty expensive. It takes a couple provisions. I don't know if... Usually you play Decree with Serenity too, because it thins your deck so much you don't really need the Oniromancy. He wasted some coins there. Love to see it. Um, do we want to go with Guillaume? It's not amazing. His fee cards are boost cards that messes him up because of black blood. I 
think we pass here. I think passing is correct. As these cards will get so much more value in round three. And we leave him in a little bit of an interesting spot. Because he needs a damage spender. So he needs to have exactly Junior. Or not Junior, Freak Show, I think. Because uh, he already played Tunnel Drill. I don't know if you play both of those. Costs a lot of provisions. So we should force one of his big plays here. Or at the very least, the order on the Novigrad. Never mind, he's playing Helvede. Okay, he's got this. He's fine then. Feels bad. Alright, well, um... I'm... Okay, I'm confused. Good by him, but... Really didn't expect that. Really did not expect it. He's going first, so we don't need as many opener cards. And we want to find... Those. So we should put... Is a lock better? Or is a knight better? It's probably the lock. we got a 2 out of 6 to see a card we want off of Palmarin. If we decree, it's a 1 out of 5. So, we want to play Palmarin before the decree. So hopefully our just points can carry us here. He has used a lot of he has used a lot of King of Beggars points though, right? Like, did a tribute five on that one, and four on this one, so three and four, so he's only got five left on King of Beggars. It's a pretty solid play by him. Like, we don't have a good card now, then. Do we just open this Siri so I guess ticks more? We miss out. No, we want to get Vilga Forts. I think we just have to drop this guy. But since he's playing crimes, then we're going to have a problem. We're going to play Smuggle and Congregation and stuff. He's playing Helvede. I don't know this deck list. But whatever's in it, he's used a lot of those provisions already. He's playing this guy. I hate this guy. Okay, so now we go Palmarin. Kind of figures to be something like that. Let me purify the guy. Just kidding. Obviously, it doesn't work. So I think we decree Vilga Forts. Although, if he's playing a lot of small guys, maybe we don't. At least we can go... It's not great with Beauclair, right? So this needs to be two turns. So I think we just go Guillaume, Roderick, then Ivar, and then hopefully he can boost his guy. We can use Beauclair that way. Oh, we're playing Heavy Control with Immunity. Some kind of no unit deck. Who knows? Who knows? We don't have any knights left, right? We're not playing Siri. Does that mean we should use this hospitality now? I think so. It's because that's quite a few more points over time if we do this. The Ivar's gonna be really big. Playing that next. I'm just confused by what his plan is here. Like, what is the finisher? I mean, if you don't kill Roderick, it gives you one coin a turn, which is the same as Tax Collector. 
while being melee locked and being a 4 for 6 instead of a 4 for 4. So, in a perfect world, Roderick is tax collector at the end of the game, spawning a token. At the end of the round. That's the problem with Roderick. He's a harem tax collector. I don't know if that matters. I guess he can use it as a fee spender. Could be playing Seagi still. I guess Seagi Collusion Finisher is still it. He can still afford that. That's probably what's going on. That might be enough for him to win. We'd want to remove this bloody good friends, but this is also one of the tags. So it's, only, it's only adding one gang tag. So we're going to decree last. Beauclair later to get more points, so this is an invocation turn probably. I'm just thinking of what we want to invocate. Obviously Seeky still gets him there. Like he's gonna be ahead of us with a Seeky here. Oh. Your wits. Always keep your wits. What? Let me take a look here. Is this no, it's it can't be some kind of one of shoot deck. I'm just playing Rico. Interesting. Really good Rico. Won't deny that. I guess he's not playing Immortals. This is very confusing. I mean, we have an we have an insane punish on this guy, right? From uh, the reset and Beauclair. I mean, this is just such a good Beauclair turn. We have to do it. I mean, get plus fourteen there and re reset this guy to one. It's so good. Still has Seeky. I think because of that reset, though, I don't. I think we're still okay. He's not a. Is it King of Beggars Seeky, right? And he'll have three gang categories for the collusion. I mean, I guess he'd be playing something different. I'm just confused by this guy's deck a little bit. Actually, a lot. So there's a Philippa. He's going to see Skiame. Pretty big Philippa. And I just don't know what this deck is. We're never getting a better uh, Beauclair than this. Unless we Invocation Guillaume, then Decree Guillaume again, hitting him and then resetting. Since we can access Vilgaforce for control, that is the best play, I believe. It's just the most options. Most options here. And he only has three gang tags, right? One, two, three. Oh, you're a blind eye. Oh, he does have four. Okay, okay. I thought this wasn't a blind eye. He could Seeky. Seeky might get him the game. It doesn't have it because he spent so many versions on other stuff. Yeah, I don't know what's up with this guy's deck. Actually, to be honest, this deck reminds me of someone who doesn't have the whole card collection. It's just trying to make stuff work. Yeah, only one poison. I bet you he was hoping to get this and another one. But there's not enough coins for that. Also, King of Beggars Neighbor came out. He's going to get it out now, right? No, not a tribute. Roderick spawns a guy, and we're fine here, just completely fine. And the Guillaume is the better play than the Vilga Forts. Glad we made that choice. That'll be it. GG. Good game. I am. I really want to know the logic between the deck building here, though. I'm very curious if this is just someone who didn't have all the cards. 
So that's the deck, guys. Nilfgaardian Knights. I I say this all the time. I it must just be I like the game, but I like the deck. Like I, like like most of the decks we play, except for Mill. That was a joke. I hate Mill. But um yeah, this was a really fun one. Nilfgaardian Knights. You have a lot of impactful decisions, and if you play them all out well, you get these really big units, and it's super satisfying. So, I really enjoy playing this deck. However, it is countered by some things, so decks with a lot of tall punish. Uh, I think... I think the Renfree game's in the video. I don't think I... I think I played that while I was recording. But, yeah, I, I think that it's just countered by tall punishes. That is what it is. However, you can do a lot of interesting stuff with it. I mean, you can get some truly massive rain farns, some pretty fun guillames, black blood I love. That's just, it's just a really fun deck. The only, like I said, the weaknesses are you kind of lack, you kind of lack like protection from tall punish, but that's why it's called tall punish. It punishes you for doing this. Other than that, it's pretty consistent. I do enjoy having the decree in it. Um, War Council is the only card that I think I'm like strongly considering swapping. The issue with War Council is that um, it doesn't have a ton of synergies. It's really good with uh, what's his name, uh, Milton, because it lets you know what you're getting into. Not Milton with uh, Paul Marin. Lets you know what the top cards are. So you can tell if it's a good Paul Marin or not. But I mean, other than that. It does have carryover from the battle prep, which is nice because sometimes you don't have a boo hurt for your Siri. You don't want to use your leader yet. So War Council is one I might consider changing and am, actually am considering changing. Then maybe bumping up Invocation to Heat Wave, even though Invocation is a super cool card. You get some good use out of it this game. But yeah, you can always do that. Swap that out maybe for Heat Wave. And then War Council, you could bump Decree to Oniromancy, which is probably a good choice, right? Like you can go... I guess we'll do it real quickly. Take this out, take this out, go Nyromancy, and then you have an extra two, uh, eight provisions here. You could do something with that. You can cut the Black Blood for the Heat Wave if you want to do it that way. Go like this, go like this, then play one Master Puppets. Okay, do that. That seems pretty decent, pretty reasonable. But yeah, War Council is just one that I am considering swapping around at the moment. But you guys, let me know what you think. Do you think we should swap this one around? What do you think about Nilfgaardian Knights? I think they're a really interesting and fun deck. You get some really big units. And you can run a lot of stuff. Like, you could put in a little... As I reset the deck here. You could put in a little Artorius Vigo um, Master Puppets package. Which is always really fun because you can steal the bronzes you're boosting on the opponent's board. That's fun. I tried that. It's good against some matchups. and It's... It's, it's more of a win more thing, right? It's, you're already good against matchups where they don't stop you from boosting other guys. And it's really good in situations where you're already boosting up one of their guys for like Rain Farn or something. And it's really bad against things you're already bad against, which is where they don't have units. So I think it's more of a win more thing, but it is pretty fun. Sometimes it does make a difference. And one card I would be remiss if I did not mention. And as sad as it is, let's just go... And talk about Kahir. I was playing Kahir in this deck. I really was playing Kahir in this deck. However, I ended up cutting him. Now, does that mean he's bad in the deck? No. He's actually pretty good in it. So then why did we cut him? Well, like I said, same reason we were we cut the uh, Master Prophets package. Because we're playing into a lot of control... And he does not do well there. However, I think we'll put him back in. But to be honest, we're playing into, um, when I say control, we played, I think I played five games prior to recording this video and taking Gahir out. In those five games, we played three Frost decks and a Scoia'tael movement deck and a Precision Strike run free deck. No, not run free. We played a trap deck, a trap deck. And they all had so much movement, Kahir never did anything. So, that's... Meta just changed. It took like 30 minutes to think about the deck. Start recording, boom. Meta's different. We don't play any of the movement decks, so that that's what it is. I think, really, if we're going to go forward, I think Kahir is really good. So, 
I, I think he is good. It's just he's so... The movement thing, the melee lock is just so annoying. But I think we do put him in. I think we do take out War Council. And I think we do something like this. Then we go Black Blood for Heat Wave. Or just bump this to Oniromancy. Then save a provision down here. Maybe take out North Guardian Knight. Maybe take out Black Blood. Black Blood's such an insane tempo swing, though. I mean, you can always play Spores. Spores works really well. Oh, I know what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to do this. We're going to take out... Um, where is... War Council. We'll take out Decree. We'll go Oniromancy. Go Kahir. I think this is what we'll go forward with. And then... We will drop a provision. Either an invocation or maybe Roderick. So an Iron gives us additional consistency. So maybe we do this. And then we go into five provisions. We add in an Alba Armored Cavalry. Or I think we do the one Master Puppets. I think this is probably what we'll go with. To run Kahir again, because Kahir is super cool. One of my favorite cards. Especially before they changed his ability. However, I was having, like not like I said, I was having trouble with movement decks. So, this is what we had. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. It was a really fun deck. I do like Nilfgaard Unites. And uh, everyone who already told me they unsubscribed from watching Toussaint and Mill won't care. But the other guys who thought that it was a uh, Toussaint deck and not Mill on April Fool's, here you go. Here's the real deck. But hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you next time. That'll be it for this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed. We'll see you next time. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more. And you can check out some more videos over here. And thanks for watching.